The Teddy Canova program will follow in just a moment. What is the 14-day palm olive plan? Yes, what is the 14-day palm olive plan? It's the biggest beauty news in years. Doctors tested this plan, proved it brought lovelier complexions to two out of three of all the women tested. Here it is. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Then massage for a full 60 seconds with palm olive's beautifying lather. Then rinse. Do this three times a day. Easy to do, yet 36 doctors proved this palm olive plan brings a lovelier complexion to two out of three women. No matter what type of skin you have, dry or oily, the 14-day palm olive plan works. So get palm olive. See what palm olive can do for your skin in only 14 days. For a dress of sweet. For a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles, it's Colgate Tooth Powder. And for a riot of fun, it's America's wacky, wistful, wonderful scatterbrain, Judy Canova. trip to the Hollywood canteen. Yeah, you, you should ought to see them soldiers crowd around me. I sure had what they wanted. Dorothy Lamour on one arm and Ann Sheridan on the other. <laughs> you know, so, some of the fellas thought I was going to give a puppet show because when I walked in, they said, here comes Punchy Judy. <laughs> but uh, I, I served sandwiches and coffee. Yeah, that's the only way I could get a fella to hold my hand was to put it between two slices of bread. <laughs> The, uh, the soldiers and the sailors at the canteen can't date any of the girls that meet there. At least that's the excuse they gave me. <laughs> they, uh, they, there's one aviator there that was uh, giving me the eye, and uh, he kept looking at my legs. So I finally asked him, I said, Do you think my legs is pretty? He said, Legs? I thought they was wind socks at half mast. <laughs> My granny, my little old granny, come along with me, and she told me that the reason that none of the service men go for me is because I ain't got a military manner. She says my flank movement looks like a disorderly retreat. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I, I felt so patriotic after last night that this afternoon I went down and volunteered for the Women's Ambulance Corps and they asked me if I was willing to go right out on the firing line and pick up a man. Listen, as short as men are in Hollywood, I'd go through cannon fire to pick up Boris Karloff. <laughs> and here is Judy to start off the musical portion of the program with Milkman, Keep Those Bottles Quiet. Charles Dant and the orchestra furnished the accompaniment. <laughs> Jumping on the swing chair all night, turning up a quota. All right, now I'm beat right down to the side, and I've got to dig myself some knots. Oh, milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Now the noise of the riveter, I don't mind, because the man with the whiskers has a dog behind it, but I can't keep punching with that victory crew when you're making me punch you with that bottle move. Give my only time, I'm gonna get the Buddha, gotta get my shut out if I'm gonna rip it. So, hey, loud bird, but that's a milk for ice, cause it's unpatriotic, it's a sabotage. Milkman, stop that great egg dryer. Talk that out if you can, lullaby it. Oh, milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Knocking out a fat tank all day, I'm working on the farmer. Okay, boy, you blast my wig with those wings, and I've got to get my body wings. So, milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Boy, 
quite in course. Come in. Oh, it's you, Geranium. Honey, I feel terrible. I just got a letter from my boyfriend, Pomeroy. Yeah, well, what's the matter? Well, they done transferred him to the South Pacific. You know, on the way over, the pilot told Pomeroy that he'd sunk a Jap cruiser. How did the pilot know he had? His bomber done told him. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, how does Pomeroy like the new camp? Oh, he ain't seen none of it. He's in the guardhouse. <laughs> yeah, he said the commanding officer asked him to take out a jeep, and he refused. Well, why should he refuse? A jeep is just a little old army car. It is. Oh, shucks. Pomeroy thought a jeep was a female Jap. Say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but honey, he did tell me about them new automatic rifles. Yeah, he said them things sure shoots awful fast. Why, they shoot so fast that it fires 12 bullets before you didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> Uh-oh. Honey, here comes Misery. That Mr. Carter, our new boy. Come in. Oh, good morning, Mr. Carter. It's a lovely morning, ain't it? The trees are beginning to bud. The pansies is in bloom. The hyacinths is in bloom. Yeah, and whose early bloomers are those hanging on the line back of my cabin? It's none of your business, so them's mine. Well, you better take them down. A bunch of kids think it's a circus tent, and they're trying to sneak in. <laughs> little kids annoy you, Mr. Carter. You know, after all, boys will be boys. Well, I'm not worrying about the kids, but some barker has opened a side show on the left leg. Mm. <laughs> well, I didn't come down here to pass the time of day. What I want to know is, when do I get some clean sheets? When are you going to give me some extra blankets? Well, uh, Mr. Carter, Young lady, you always remember that to make a success of any business, you've got to work, work, and work. Of course, it isn't any time at all before you grow old, your looks are gone, you're a has-been. So work while you're young. Uh, Mr. Carter... Do you think I'll lose my looks when I grow old? Uh, if you're lucky. <laughs> young lady, why aren't you married? Well, sir, I'm just a mere slip of a girl. I'm too young. I'm still at the convalescent age. <laughs> well, another thing, why do you always go around telling everybody you're only 18? Well, why should I confess to 22 when I'm only 25? But uh, speaking real serum like though, I can get all the fellas I want. Why, I remember once that three fellas proposed to me, Percival, Albert, and Dewey. But I turned them all down. Well, sir, them three fellas were so downhearted that Percival took poison, Albert took gas, and... and... Dewey took Manila. <laughs> Young lady, you have no breeding. Now, I am a man of culture. You sure are. Honey, he is a man of culture. Oh, I thought he said vulture. <laughs> You, 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 you have no, no, no eclat, no sang fra, no savoir faire. Listen here, never mind that imported stuff. You're lucky to get a drink of anything these days. <laughs> oh, I give up. All I want from you, young lady, is quick, efficient service and plenty of it. And good day to you. You know, honey, a man as nasty as Mr. Carter ought to be fighting the enemy. Say, honey, how come he ain't in the army? Well, he's 5B. 5B, what in the world is that? Well, that's bifocal, ball head, bridge work, bay window, and bunion. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Niles and Sylvester. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> no, that sort of stuff, Miss Judy. Say, uh, why is your brow all puckered? Yes, sir. Uh, what goes on here, Judy? Oh, Mr. Carter was in here raising cane with us about the service and stuff. See, I wish he'd never come here at all. Can't we think of some way to make him leave? Oh, let's forget about Carter. Say, how about a little poker, huh? <clears throat> well, idea. Okay, you deal. All right. You know, whenever I start to play cards, I always think of Colgate Tooth Powder. Oh, shucks. I knew I was going to get sucked into a sales talk about Colgate Tooth <clears throat> Powder. <laughs> well, why does Colgate Tooth Powder remind you of <clears throat> card games? Well... You can't get a better deal anywhere when it comes to a dentifrice that will reveal all the natural brilliance of your teeth. The deuce, you say? Yes, that's right, Sylvester. Just get a toothbrush, sprinkle liberally with Colgate tooth powder, and poke her in your mouth and start brushing away. 
Okay, that's enough. Now, let's ante. Yes, your auntie and your uncle will have a breath that's sweet if you'll just remember to use Colgate tooth powder night and morning and before every date. Well, let's start playing. Now, what's the limit? Oh, there's no limit to the queens you can draw if you have a pleasing breath. And scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate tooth powder removes oral unpleasing breath instantly. Oh, sugar and bucket ass! Come on, I'll get the chips down. Yes, Sylvester, when the chips are down, you'll be a winner every time if you use Colgate tooth powder night and morning and before every day. Do this, and I'll promise you a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. Remember the name, Colgate tooth powder. Come in. Pardon me, but do you have an aspirin? Yes, I have. Well, for goodness sake, take it. You look terrible. <laughs> people come from. Mr. Knopf, will you please introduce Eddie's song? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Dean, our baritone, sings his version of I'll Take You Home Again, can't we? I'll take you home again, can't we? Across the ocean wild and wide. Been. Since first you were my bonny bride, the roses all have left your cheek. I've watched them fade away and die. Your voice is sad when you speak. Tears be dimmed your loving eyes. Oh, I will take you back, Kathleen, to where your heart will feel no pain. And when the fields are fresh and green, oh, music after talking to that Mr. Carter. Come in. Pardon me for talking in your face, senorita. Oh, hello, Pedro. Where have you been? I was over to the post office and on the way back, I took a shortcut through the woods. And you know, senorita, you see a lot of strange little animals in the woods. I saw two little worms talking. Oh, stop, Pedro. Two worms talking. See, senorita, one worm says to the other... Hello, babe. How about a date? The other worm says, Quit kidding. I'm your other hand. <laughs> Pedro, I don't believe a word of it. Oh, a funny thing happened to me, too. I was walking along, and all of a sudden, I step on a skunk. Boy, was he surprised. And the second surprise was on me. <laughs> oh, stop, Pedro. Listen, what were you doing this morning with Mr. Carter? That is what I came to complain about, Senorita. He took me hunting with him this morning. Well, what's wrong with that? Senorita, I want you to make him buy a dog. Why? Well, I get awful tired swimming out and bringing back the dead dogs in my mouth. <laughs> Pedro, what, what is that package you oh, have? Oh, oh, that's for you, Senorita. They gave him to me at the post office here. Oh, good. I've been expecting that. Thanks. You can go now. Senorita, could I have the day off to visit my sister? She had quadruplets last week. Quadruplets? Gee, four little babies. What's their names? Eeny, meeny, miny, and Manuelo. <laughs> no, you mean eeny, meeny, miny, and Mo. No, Senorita, my sister says she don't want any more. <laughs> you may leave now. Hasty luego. Hasty lumbago to you too, Pedro. <laughs> Gee, now to open this package. The Invisible Detective Agency. We teach you to be a detective by mail. 
Gosh, if I can only learn to be a detective, I can follow Mr. Carter and see what he does for a living. Geranium! Ah, oh, geranium! Come in, honey. You calling me, honey? Yeah, look, geranium. That detective course I sent away first come by mail. Now we can follow Mr. Carter and find out what he does. Say, did I tell you I was down there in his cabin this morning? Yeah, and when I got done making the bed, I thought I'd look in that little old black bag he's got. And suddenly he sneaks up behind me and sticks a gun in my ribs. He stuck a gun in your ribs? What was he trying to do, hide it? Uh-uh. <laughs> hey, you must have looked funny. A forty-five pistol and a fifty-two waist. But no, I'm serious. He told me to get out or he'd shoot me full of holes. Well, listen, did you get to see what was in the black bag? Yeah, honey. And you know something? That man ain't no doctor. No, there was all kind of tools in there like burglars use. Yes, sir, he must be a burglar or a spy. Well, we'll find out. Look here what it says here on this paper cover. Mm. Follow our course studiously and you will become a gizzard, a wizard at shadowing people. In no time at all, you can be a first-class slinker. That ain't a T, is it? <laughs> say, what else did it say? This is exciting. Read me some more. You better read it to me, Geranium. Right there, right there where it says lesson one. All right, honey. It says, yes, it says, how to become a human bloodhound. Get down on all fours on the rug and look for clues. Crawl along and sniff the rug like a bloodhound. There. All right, now I'm on my hands and knees. Now I'll sniff like a bloodhound. <laughs> huh, what was that, honey? Shucks, met another bloodhound. Uh-oh. <laughs> right, I'm going to give this detective up. I'll never be a detective. Why, well, I was five years old before I could find my own toes. Oh, now, honey, quit talking like that. You was a smart little child. Oh, you know you, your papa's pet. Yeah, he couldn't afford a dog. <laughs> Dear old Pappy. So every night, Pappy would take me on his knee and sing me a lullaby. Gosh, now that all the years have gone by, I still remember Pappy's lullabies. Gerania, what's the second course of Mademoiselle from Arm and Tears? <laughs> oh, let's forget your baby days, Miss Judy, and consecrate on this here detective stuff. Let's see now. It says here, yes, uh, when given a third degree, use kindness. You will attain better results. Remember, be kind. That gives me an idea. Now, Geranium, you are a prisoner that has committed a crime. Who, me? Yep, you. Now, you sit down there in that chair. Now, mm-hmm. I'm a detective, and I'll start a question here. Right. Geranium Jones, <clears throat> did you steal that watch? I ain't saying, Mr. Policeman, you can't get nothing out of me. Oh, so you won't talk, eh? Treat the prisoner with kindness. All right, you won't talk, eh? Then you must eat this chocolate eclair with whipped cream. Oh, no, no, Miss Judy, I can't do that. Don't make me eat that, honey. Hmm, got to use force, huh? Well, I'll stuff it down your mouth. There. <laughs> I told you, honey, there goes my girdle. <laughs> Come in. Miss Judy. Eddie, you are speaking to Judy Canova, detective. Here's my card. I don't see any card. Shucks, I'm a magician, too. <laughs> State your case, Eddie, my boy. Miss Judy, this is serious. I was passing cabin eight a second ago, and I heard two shots. Oh, shucks, that ain't nothing. Pappy used to take a couple of shots for dinner every night. <laughs> These were revolver shots, Miss Judy. I think the fellow in that cabin shot his wife. Well, gosh, what do we do? Honey, here's a chance to try out them things you learned from the detective book. Okay, I'll boil him. Honey, you mean grill him. Boil or grill. I'll make him hot under the collar. Lead the way, Eddie. Gosh, if I make good, I can see my name right now over the door. Judy Canova, the crinema, the crime, the crinolent, the... Gosh, Judy Canova, policeman. (laughs) Here's the cabin right here, Miss Judy, number eight. I'll take over, Eddie. Now watch me solve this, uh, solve the crime. Open up there, fella. This is Detective Canova. Put the cuffs on me. Put them on. I'll confess. I did it. Mister, why did you kill your wife? She tortured me. She tortured me. She tortured me. Oh, you poor, poor man. You poor, poor man. You poor, poor. Tell me your story. I couldn't stand it any longer. She kept insisting that we save our money for a rainy day. That drove me mad. Her, always talking about a rainy day. Rain, rain. I had to kill her. But why? I'm a member of the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Thank you.
Judy will be back in a few moments, ladies and gentlemen. So in the meantime, remember, before you go out to a dance and maybe romance, check up and make sure you can pass the close-up test with a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. It's easy if you'll use Colgate Tooth Powder, for Colgate Tooth Powder not only removes dull surface film from your teeth, bringing out all the natural brilliance of your smile, but at the same time, it assures you of a breath that's invitingly sweet and fresh. Now, that's not just my say-so. Scientific tests have definitely proved that Colgate Tooth Powder stops oral unpleasing breath, stops it instantly in seven cases out of ten. So don't risk your rating for dating. Uh Uh-uh. Simply brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. And I'll promise you a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. That's it. Colgate Tooth Powder. And now here's Judy with another song. This one is called It Makes No Difference Now. Makes no difference now what kind of life fate handed me. I'll get along without you now, that's plain to see. I don't care what happens next, for I'll get by somehow. I don't worry, cause it makes no difference now. It was just a year ago when I first met you. I learned to love you, and I thought you'd love me too. But that's all in the past, and I'll forget somehow. I don't worry, cause it makes no difference now. Although I know that it will be so hard to do Let things happen as they will and I'll get by somehow I don't worry cause it makes no difference now Solve my first big case as a detective. Now to trail Mr. Carter and find out what he really is. I'll be practicing all next week, and I'll meet you all back here at the motel. And say, by the way, we'll be entertaining the Douglas Aircraft Workers from the Civic Auditorium in Long Beach, California. So try and meet us all there. This is simply yours, Judy Canova in Hollywood, saying thanks a lot and good night, soldier. Wherever you may be, my heart's lonely without you. Good night, soldier. Absolutely. Remember, for a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles, it's Colgate Tooth Powder. <laughs> This is Ken Niles saying, see you all next Tuesday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.